Hey everyone, Hammer Dan here with Hammer Performance. So today we're going to show you how to do a cranking compression test on a bike. Um, some of the reasons we want to do this, if for whatever reason with your bike, um, you're thinking maybe something's wrong, um, whether it's fueling, electrical, bike's not quite running right, down on horsepower, some of those things. Um, we want to go ahead and, and, and figure out, first of all, whether the bike is, is sound or not. And one of the quickest, easiest ways of doing that is to do a cranking compression test. Um, doing a cranking compression test is going to tell us whether the bike is mechanically sound internally. Um, making sure we don't have any leaky valves, wrong push rod length, things like that. Right? And from that point, if we're good uh, cranking compression wise, then we can move on to, to sorting out other issues. But today we're going to show you how to do a cranking compression test. Um, it's very, very important. It's super easy to do. You just need uh, some basic tools to do it uh, and it gives us a lot of good information. So with that being said, um, first thing you're going to want to do is get a, uh, uh, a compression tester. You can purchase these at any auto parts store. They're very reasonably priced. Um, you may even be able to rent one at an auto parts store. Um, sometimes they'll do that, uh, but AutoZone, O'Reilly's, that type deal. One thing we don't suggest is don't go to Harbor Freight. We've tested their cranking compression tools, not quite up to par. Um, so just make sure it's a, a legit cranking compression tester. So this is what they look like. We're going to have a gauge here that's going to read PSI for us. Um, for each cylinder, we're going to have the hose, quick connect hose, um, and then the fitting itself. Now make sure with whatever kit that you purchase that it has or it comes with a uh, 12 millimeter fitting, okay, for the spark plug hole. That's very important, okay? Otherwise, some kits don't have it with cars and whatnot. Um, so make sure that the fitting has a 12 millimeter fitting in there to, to fit your spark plug hole, okay? Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is warm the bike up if you can. Um, warming the bike up is going to allow the lifters to pump up. Sometimes you can get skewed readings running a cold bike. If the bike is cold and the lifters have bled down, it's going to give you a really, really high uh, uh, reading on the compression tester. So make sure if you can, take it around the block, whatever the case may be, let it warm up in the garage, um, but let the, let the lifters pump up, let the oil flow and, and coat cylinders so that we got a good reading there, okay? Uh, so once we get the bike warmed up, which we've done, we've warmed up this bike. This is Alex's bike. It's a pretty hot bike. So uh, with that being said, let's talk about numbers here real quick. Um, normally when we do a cranking compression test, some of the earlier model bikes, you're going to see cranking compression probably around that 140, 150 range, somewhere right in there. And it's going to vary depending on the cams that are in the bike and, and uh, compression, the way the compression is set up. What we can tell you is on some of the Sportsters on the later model bikes, um, they've pushed compression in those bikes, 9.7 to 1 on the compression and whatnot. When you do a cranking compression test on a stock bike, a stock later model Sportster, you're going to see upwards of 190-ish or so somewhere in there. Okay. Now, Talking about cranking compression numbers, normally when we set up our bikes here at the shop, whether it's a twin cam, whether it's a Sportster, whatever the build may be, we usually shoot for about 190, 200, somewhere in there. When we get, what we found is our threshold, usually on cranking compression numbers, is about 210, 215, somewhere in there. At that point, anything higher than that, we start to walk that fine line in ha of having to use race fuel, okay? So we don't have any detonation or pinging issues. So right around that 215 mark, somewhere up in there. I can tell you with Alex's bike, he's pushed the uh, compression on this pretty high. Since we're a shop, he can, he can play with that and deal with that. So this is probably gonna crank over 215, not much over, but probably over that. Um, he hasn't had any problems as far as fueling goes and, and running, you know, 93 octane from the pump. So um, just keep that in mind. Our threshold is roughly 215, somewhere in there. And of course, that number is going to change a little bit as we go from sea level to, you know, higher altitudes or whatnot. So um, that's about where we want to be. So we'll pump this and we'll see where we're at and we'll show you how to do it. Now, one of the big things that uh, people do wrong when they're doing a cranking compression test is they don't hold the throttle wide open while they're doing the test. That's very important. Makes common sense that if you don't hold the throttle open, you're not allowing air in there and you're going to get a skewed low reading. 
okay so it's very important to make sure we hold the throttle open i'll show you those tests with the throttle closed and with the throttle open so first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and pop the spark plug wire off um, you're going to want to do both cylinders but uh, for this video we'll just show you one cylinder just to give you the straight up of how to do it okay um, you're going to go ahead and remove your spark plug If you have washers, make sure you keep those washers handy and put them on your spark plug. So there's that one. You're going to want to remove your other one as well. So remember, remove both spark plugs. All right, now that we have both spark plugs out, we're going to go ahead and screw in our tester. Now, there's, let me point this out here real quick. Normally, on the end of the tester, there's a rubber O ring seal on there. Whatever you do, don't try to just jam this in there and turn it super, super tight. You'll flex that seal out. That's all we're looking for is just a snug seal on this. Okay, so pay attention to that. Every tester may be a little bit different. Ours has a rubber O-ring on there, and so we're going to bring it down and just lightly snug that O-ring to the head there. Okay, once we do that, we're going to go ahead and hook up our cranking compression tester. Pretty straightforward there. Okay, we have our gauge. So at this point, you're going to want to turn the power on the bike. Okay, we're going to want to make sure your switch is in the run position. So the first test that I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a cranking compression test with the throttle closed, and we'll see what it pumps. Um, like I said before, with Alex's bike, um, he's got compression pretty high in this thing, so it's probably going to pump a pretty high number, even closed. So we'll take a look. Okay, now you want to crank it until you see the needle stop moving. So closed, we're at about, oh, I want to say that's roughly about 200, somewhere right in there. Okay, um, and you'll be able to figure out the gauge and then in each line and whatnot and what it means. And then it's got a release button to release that pressure. Okay, so closed, we are at roughly 200, which is pretty dang high for being closed. Let's take a look and see what it does with it wide open. So we cleared it. We're going to hold the throttle wide open while we hit the start button. And again, we're going to pump it until that needle stops moving. Okay, so as you can see there, we're probably at about, looks like maybe 215, is that what that says, yeah. Alex? Yep. Roughly 215, okay. So we picked up about you know 10 PSI from open to closed. Okay, now again, when we look at that, we'll turn the power off here. Um, this one's mechanically sound. Um, it's pumping up where we, you know, put put that compression we set it up there to be that high again Alex wanted to push push the envelope with his compression and everything um, and that um, and so this is good the bike is mechanically sound the valves are closing the valves are filling the cylinders properly um, with the throttle wide open so keep that in mind this is the first thing that we're going to want to do to diagnose anything in the bike um, if you call us for whatever reason um, and we need to work through anything with the bike that's the first thing we're going to have you do is a cranking compression test so simple to do it gives us a quick answer on whether or not the bike is mechanically sound from that point one of the next chest checks that you would want to do would be doing a leak down test to make sure rings and cylinders are sealing uh, properly and everything and uh, down the road here we'll go ahead and do that test as well and show you so other than that that's cranking compression test in a nutshell if you have questions shoot shoot the comments down below um, other than that like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, watch our YouTube and subscribe. Peace out.